So, numbers. Got to know your numbers. Went over the debts. Based on the numbers, I look for opportunities for this person. They got the HELOC. That's a potential option. Right? First lien or second. I would prefer first. I think they could do a lot of damage simply because now we've got access to equity straight up front that we could use to wipe out some debts to get the, the cash flow from negative back to, you know, even Steven and then potentially positive while simultaneously to also redirect cash flow. I wrote some things over here, talked about, you know, not overpaying the IRS, right? Fix your W4, potentially increasing work hours at the place you already uh, work at. That could be an option. This is, um, you know, cutting off subscriptions. There's a there's an amazing stat out there regarding Americans spend about eight to nine hundred dollars a year. I mean, a month on subscriptions, right? That's your Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus, da da da, right? Even other subscriptions like your groceries, um, Uber Eats, um, Uber, Lyft, right? Everything nowadays has a subscription. There's like subscriptions everywhere now, right? It's a great business model when you're on the other end, not when you're on the consuming end. Not that great. The bills add up. So if I'm willing to cut off cable, right? If I'm willing to cut off Disney Plus and Netflix and Hulu for just a period of time, like I'm not radical like my, like my grandpa Dave Ramsey is, you know, rice and bean diet. I'm not that radical with it, right? But I am saying, hey, potentially we could go into conservation mode. Keep what is needed. Keep what is needed. Say, for example, like this membership, that's like extremely important or your tithing or your offerings and your givings, right? Or your subscription to any type of educational material. Like let that be your substitute for Netflix and, and Hulu and Disney and cable is straight education right? You could save a lot of money there. So any waste, right? That we could cut off to potentially reduce that number just for a period of time. Cause I don't want to form a culture of cheapness, right? And, and greed, right? Even when you're poor, you can be greedy, right? Even when you're broke, even when you're making low middle-class income, you can be greedy. The way you're being greedy is by not fulfilling and walking your purpose by living in the shame and the guilt and the curse that you chose to live in, that you continue to choose to live in instead of stepping out into the out of your comfort zone, stepping out of the box and asking for help so that you may receive the help you need, right? Um, this is really cool. Another thing that I put here is called a ROBS, it stands for Roll Over Business Startup. This person could take their potential, potentially, I'm not sure, but I've have seen this done with 401ks. Not sure if it could be done with a TSP, but you could roll over that 280 grand into a business startup, which could be used to generate cash flow to change the trajectory of this person's finances within six to 12 months. Can provide the capital needed to put this person in a better financial position without having to pay early uh, retirement, early penalty fees, right? So you may wanna look that up. That's a pretty cool option. I have a resource for that I will put in the chat. So I'll put that in the chat. That's a, a phenomenal resource, someone I know that uh, has helped some of my clients do this. Um, but coming back to the home equity line of credit, let's say this person was able to obtain the debt tool, great. From there, I would immediately um, reallocate this debt and this loan. 246 and 178, 3.99, 6.99. I believe 6.99 is amortized, 3.99 is simple interest, but we're getting that cash flow, moving it into line, and then we can reuse the credit card to run bills to recapture some cash flow, right? Through cashback rewards. So that's the only reason why I would do that. Normally, I would probably leave it there if the rate is in fact lower than what they get approved for. Chances are, with this really good credit score, they could potentially get an introductory rate of less than 3.99. I've seen 2.99, I've seen two and a half, two, 1.99 for a period of time. And that could really buy us some time, put us in a better position. I would also move this money, that cash on hand is not doing anything. I would also move it into the HELOC if I were to get approved. And I can have that money knocking down the debt, putting me in a better financial position 
position, right? Cutting off contributions. If the, if you are someone that is running a negative or like a net zero, let's say, and you're putting money in a retirement account, earning average six, seven, eight percent, whatever your financial advisor tells you, the reality is when you look at the internal rate of return after taxes, inflation, and costs, you're more so netting two to four percent if you're lucky. In many cases, people are coming out negative sometimes, not even realizing it because over a long period of time, it's a positive average. But just having one financial loss in an account this large, I could go from having 300 grand and losing 15% of that in say one year, but it would take me multiple years just to recover or come back to what I last was at, right? So if I lose 10% of say 300 grand, right? Boom, now I'm at 270. Well, you're gonna have to earn higher than 10% in just one year to come back to the three. And that's just breaking even. What's the likelihood of that actually happening? So when I work with clients, I'm like, look, temporarily we could cut off contributions to your retirement account to increase cash flow and to recover multiple double digit interest returns as well as multiple hundreds of dollars of cash flows today as opposed to waiting for it when you're old and gray right let's get it today so that when you're old and gray there's plenty of cash flow right so that's one opportunity if they don't go the first lien heloc route we could potentially get what's called a securities backed line of credit or an asset backed line of credit right that's usually the terms that they use might also use the term margin account where they would take a portion of this asset that you have and they would put it in a, I believe what's called a margin account, margin loan, and you can access a line, a percentage of your asset to 80, say 40, 50% of that number, right? And then I could get typically with secured assets, secured lines of credits, usually the rates are like two and three and 4% or lower, very, very low. And I could use that to say, get rid of these two debts, move my cash into the line, and try to come back to a, a positive cash flow, right? So with the help of restructuring debt, consolidation, mixed with velocity, and then these tools right here to get back to a net positive, as well as focusing on how can I bring in more money? How can I bring in more money? Is that starting a business? Is that picking up a new skill? Is it working more hours? What, what can I be doing? How can I use the skills, gifts, and talents that God gave me and monetize it in the marketplace, right? God gives us gifts, talents, skills, right? And we are called out and we are to, in other words, monetize our gifts and get paid abundantly for it, right? If we rightly divide the word of truth, you will begin to see the book, not only as a religious text or historical text, but rather a constitution that comes with promises and covenants laws and bylaws and statutes and limitations and regulations on how to run a kingdom if you read the book that way you just might receive your next revelation you just might receive your next miracle you just might receive your next blessing when you operate in kingdom kingdom not a religion to truly operate in kingdom is to monetize your gifts and your skills and get paid abundantly for it where therefore you can then be uh, very easily a cheerful giver and giving is the first step to wealth multiplication not just wealth creation wealth multiplication first step is giving this person gave their numbers gave their time gave their efforts it's not always money they gave their time their efforts their grace their attention right their focus right they even wrote a nice email saying bless you denzel thank you for what you do for this community da, da, da. here's my numbers i hope i gave you everything i could i'm like you gave me a lot for for someone that is just coming across for the first time you gave me a lot of information love it can't wait to have a discussion with them can't wait to bless this person right so this is what i see so far they could go the first lean heloc route in addition they could maybe get either the, the TSP loan options also on the table. I've seen TSP loans as low as like 1%, like one and a half, 1.75%. That is extremely low. And if that meant just temporarily moving some debts over here, 
to 1.75 and having a much lower payment requirement to, to potentially get to a net zero, right? Then I would consider it. Um, or this thing, the, the rollover business startup, where they could say, listen, this 280 grand isn't helping you right now, so let's put it to work. What is your skills? What are your gifts? What are your talents? What is God's purpose for your life? What is God's purpose for your life? Well, once you know what God's purpose is for your life, I doubt it exists in the stock market. That's just the truth. I doubt it exists on charts. I think your gift, your purpose that God has for you is, is in the marketplace working with people helping them grow and then getting to a point where you your asset could be on the stock market rather than you sending your 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 little dollars right that most of us make these little dollars and throwing it into hopes and dreams without an actual plan right if somebody wants to learn the stock market i would rather read as many books as i can on the stock market I would rather go into communities that talk stock market every day, that read charts every single day. I'd rather spend a couple dollars reading books, being a part of communities, and me becoming my own financial advisor rather than paying astronomical fees for little dollars. I could understand if you was a multimillionaire, then it makes sense to spread that money around so that you're, you're protecting the money from yourself. I understand that. But when I'm dealing with people who are making 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 20 K a year, under 100 K a year, what are you doing paying someone three, four, five percent in account management fees and just annual fees and costs? What, what, what are you doing? When you could spend that cost in a book, right? And potentially increase your return by quadruple because now you know how the stock market actually works. You know where the rigs are. You know how to look for cash flow. You know how to do options. Or maybe you're like, the heck with the stock market. Let me look at Forex. That's where the real money's at. Over a trillion plus dollars gets moved every single day. So maybe you're like, let me learn that instead. Or maybe you're like, hey, my God told me according to my purpose for his will is to start this business. And here you've got you know, the assets to go ahead and move that money over and get it started. And that could potentially bring an extra 500 to a thousand bucks a month, right? There's a lot of opportunities in the, in the marketplace right now, whether it's to become an influencer, whether it's to do affiliate marketing, referral marketing, network marketing, direct sales, um, you name it, commission base, right? Equity base to improve these, these four major numbers, which in return improves the, the debt situation. Right. So that is uh, in a nutshell for the case study itself.